there's only one system. And education, criminal justice, right? Corporate America, they all operate within this one system. And everything really begins within the educational realm. When schools fail, the criminal justice system takes over. When schools win, there's less of a need for me. Growing up in Southern California at the time when the Rodney King riots and verdicts and stuff had occurred, I'm a little kid, right? I'm, a little, I don't, I'm not sure what's happening. I watch the TV like everybody else. But I recall like my grandmother just started crying. It was like things had never changed. Uh, I didn't want to go out and break anything or ride or death. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little kid. There was, as a little kid, nothing louder in me than the voice of saying, "Stop! Everybody, stop! Don't do this the right way." And so that was my uh, foray into this want to get engaged specifically with the community. And so fast forward from 1992 then to 2016, when the Charlotte protests happened, it was just my everyday life at this point, I feel like. Gone to court that morning, had my shirt and tie on. Um, after court, went to this community sort of gathering for like a prayer vigil, and just hung out with the folks. Afterwards, they went uptown, so I followed them, and. What happened, happened next, and I just, again, tried to maintain the peace, keep people from hurting each other. You can't lose any more lives, man. I'm a public defender. I can't represent any more people. We don't need more people to go to die. No more people being arrested. We need to take a stand and do it the right way. My hope in all of my civic engagement is to create more voices that can come to the table, more equity to say, hey, consider our opinion as well as we need to rebuild and um, to help us get better as a community. And so there's already a system, a system that exists. We just need to make sure everyone has access to that system and can you know, function in it the same way. And I think that's where we have to recognize everything is very interconnected. They built prisons based on the uh, results of third grade testing. So kids in the third grade, if they don't do well on tests and they fail tests, our state and there's a system that builds prisons based on the number of failures. And so when kids, young boys get to ninth or 10th grade, they can't pass Algebra 1 or English 1. And because they can't pass those classes, they're either getting kicked out or they're dropping out. Which then puts them, to do, left it, leaves them to do what, right? They end up then in a system that's uh, going to convict them and then they're nationally incarcerated. And that's that whole school to prison pipeline that we often hear and so we to know that's how things work i believe we can then work together to just change it to make sure kids in third grade can read can write can pass this dog on test all right and i think that's where equity comes in. so access to a system for everybody and equity to where now that i'm in the system i get my first shot being in the middle is almost like being on common ground because it's where the only place two sides can come together and so if I can be on the common ground and help, and help folks come together on that common ground, then I think we can achieve some goals together. And so I've been sharing this presentation a lot. And I've traveled to about 12 different states. And I would have done all this training within the past five months. Not just going and doing the training and presenting, but having follow-up as well. To say, hey, here are ways and legal motions and, and, and opportunities we have as lawyers as judges, as whomever, to really uh, challenge the system, to challenge our status quo, to use our privilege to actually do something about it. I'm explaining to you implicit bias. So, oh my God, OMG, am I a racist? Are you racist? No, you're not. You're not. In the words of the philosopher Tupac Shakur, you were given this world. You didn't make it. It's not your fault that we're here where we are, but it is your problem. Take one step forward. You have a job. I'm tired of living every day under the threat of death. I have no moral complex. I want to live as long as anybody in this building tonight. And sometimes I begin to doubt whether I'm going to make it through. I'm tired of having to stand before a lot of good, meaning white people to talk about race. But the reality is, I have a seven-year-old son, a four-year-old son, who daddy knows that in 10 years, I can't.
can't protect them. So I gotta keep spreading this message. Because maybe you can. Two words, common and unity. And so common unity is what we're all at, working towards as a community. And that's, that's I guess, why I do it.